listening to Tapped In, Buckham County's Half Hour to Empower on WRES 100.7 FM in Asheville. Listen up and get tapped into local important resources, information, and topics. Learn more about the topics of today's show at buncombecounty.org. Okay, it's time to get tapped in. Well, hello, hello, hello. And greetings to everyone that's listening to my voice. And this is... Zapped in, and I am here with you. And I am Zakia Bill Rogers. And I'm Leonard Jones. Leonard and I come to you from the Communications and Public Engagement Department of Buckham County, where heroes wear cape. Joining us today is Dr. Noria Armstrong, Chief, Execu- Chief Equity and Human Rights Officer for Buckham County. She often referred. She is often referred to as Dr. No. She had. She is here to discuss and share what's happening in the county's equity office and some upcoming events and resources that the community can participate in. Welcome, Dr. No. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself, so our folks that are listening and that will be viewing this later will know who we're talking to. Yes. Well, I am Dr. Noriel Armstrong. I go by Dr. No. Uh, I am a licensed clinical mental health uh, counselor supervisor. I've been doing therapy for 15 years now. Wow. Yeah, 15 years now. Um, that's, I guess, my main career path. Um, but during that time, I've always done um, diversity and equity work. I teach at, or used to teach at Montreal College. I teach part-time at Lenore Ryan. And so I've always been invested in diversity and equity and just, you know, bringing a more just world. And so when the position at the county opened up, it's like, this will be perfect. It can be all of my jobs in one. Um, and so I've been with the county now since March of 2023 um, in this role as Chief Equity Human Rights Officer, and I'm loving it. It's hard work. Um, it's fast paced, it's demanding, but we're seeing growth and change and I'm excited about that. Yeah, congratulations. You're ready to come up on 18 months. Yes. Yes. It goes by so fast. Uh, yeah, it's just like the summer. Right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about um, what you do and all those great things. And um, it's so important, um, especially with the climate uh, that we're dealing with today. So please share with us about your role as the Equity and Human Rights Office. Yeah, so the Equity and Human Rights Office um, was established to help to challenge systemic um, inequities, to look at the barriers that are in place um, that are keeping people from resources and supports and tools so that all Buncombe County employees and staff um, can find value and can thrive and can contribute to a socially just world. Mm -hmm. And so that boils down to we wanted to see what barriers are out there in the community Um, internally within the county and externally and how we can try to make changes, adapt, erase some of these or Mm -hmm. um, eliminate some of these barriers so that everyone has that chance to live in a socially just world Mm -hmm. and to succeed. And so we are looking at policies, we're looking at practices, we're looking at programming, um, we're looking at events that we hold and trying to find ways to build equity. And when I say equity, unfortunately, a lot of times people think just diversity, Mm -hmm. black and white race, but equity means equity for all. So LGBTQ, accessibility, if you're in a wheelchair, have a disability, visible and Mm -hmm. invisible disabilities, religion, um, height, age, all of those things that you can put an ism behind. Um, The equity office, we're here to look at those and try to um, erase those barriers to provide a more socially just world so that people can thrive. And, and, And when people say, oh, what is your definition of equity? You know, and I usually lean towards it is a way to make sure that everyone has what they need to thrive. And I think that's the part and people miss out everyone. Mm-hmm. We're not just seeing one person because we know that there are disadvantages in many different um, lives. Like you said, disabilities or, or, or these abilities, mm-hmm. you know, the different things that, you know, it's not just race or, or gender and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you. And so I know, um, just being with the county, um, back in 2019 and 2020, the Equity and Inclusion Work Group worked on a Racial Equity Action Plan, and which one of those um, items was to develop an equity office. So mm-hmm. just thinking about the evolution of that office, uh, we know you're the second person in this position. Mm-hmm. Um, however, so when we look at that, the team grew. When they first came, it was a one person team. Mm-hmm. So what's the evolution of your office in FY25, which is a physical year 25, um, with the equity team since I think it was FY22 when it first came on. Um, one person team, but what's the evolution of this office and who is on your team? 
Um, first of all, I want to say that I want to give kudos to Buncombe County for seeing the need mm-hmm. and getting the people together from the county. I think it was 31 people that came together um, in the Equity Inclusion Work Group and said, hey, let's figure this out. Um, the REAP, you know, grew out of that and then the Equity Human Rights Office. And even in the work that I do, collaborating with other government agencies, other equity officers, the conferences, the workshops, um, a lot of them like, wow, that's how y'all got here? I'm like, yeah, they're like, we we didn't have that. We still don't have that. We don't have an equity office. So yeah. I do feel that Buncombe County is um, taking a lead step in the work. Um, and so I have an A4. Uh, well, we're a total of five member staff. I have four um, employees that work with me. Um, and they each have their kind of their own mm-hmm. lane. And so our foundational equity inclusion specialist, Hector Salgado, he works with all departments um, more on the internal side. Mm-hmm. And so looking at those policies and processes and um, different programming. And so he works a lot with procurement and with finance and with budget because those are those internal that maybe not out in the community as much. Yeah. Um, and then I have a uh, former mayor, Terry Bellamy. She is our safety and justice challenge mm-hmm. equity inclusion specialist. Um, her position is grant funded to specifically look at inequities within the justice system. Mm -hmm. So she is in my department, but she works hand in hand very closely with the Justice Services Department Mm -hmm. on how to reduce those barriers with the jail population, um, how to increase um, or decrease those barriers. I know one of the things was like the court notification system or the court navigator that came out of that um, position um, to help people learn how to navigate the courthouse better so that they're Mm -hmm. not late to their appointments or late to meet their judge or late to meet their lawyer. Um, and so she's doing awesome work um, with that and uh, many other initiatives. And then I have my community equity inclusion specialist, which is in Wayna Smith. She works really closely with our forward facing department. So CAPE, uh, elections, parks and recs. And so helping them to look at, again, programming positions that they're hiring for events they want to offer and maybe looking at, you know, did we get this translated into another language? Did we think about uh, where we're sending the advertisements, how we're advertising, how yeah. we're getting people. Um, and then lastly um, is Nafisa Harrison. She is my Inclusive Connection and Healing Coordinator, another grant funded position through the Opioid Settlement Funds. Mm-hmm. Um, and she is there to really get out into the community, um, meet with just community organizations and people to talk about the effects of opioids, specifically with BIPOC community, with a strong emphasis on the black community because we've seen those numbers rise so greatly with opioid overdose. Yes. yes. With opioid overdoses. Mm -hmm. And so she's putting on a lot of events. She's collaborating, um, finding out where she can get to. We actually yesterday were just walking back from lunch and ran into somebody from um, DJJ. She's like, I need to talk to you because we need to get some things Mm -hmm. going with the youth. And DJ, he's like, yes, call me. So that's really what she's there to do but also to support equity in those ways as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, so thank you so that so much. And, I, and I, I've worked with all the members of your team and they are absolutely awesome. Um, I know in Wena, um, and not just to uh, pull her out, but she's so passionate about mm-hmm. this community and really going out there. So if you have an opportunity to meet her and work with her, because she does a, that, that open community. Um, area, please do please grab her because a lot of folks are just like, uh, like Nikki said, is doing justice services, so she's not like she's in the healing um, area. But you know, some of those things I meant to say, Terry's in the justice service, but all of them do such great work. Um, please share with us about some of the um, about some of the equity and human rights office successes and how the equity office is incorporating equity in various areas throughout the county. Sure. Uh, so some of the successes we've had is one, the continuance of the equity and inclusion work group. Mm-hmm. We meet monthly. Uh, we've also uh, developed two affinity groups. So we have mm-hmm. a person of color affinity group and a the BU affinity group, which is for our LGBTQIA plus and mm-hmm. ally community members. And it's just a safe space for um, people with similar values, similar beliefs to get together and mm-hmm. feel safe to talk about really anything. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had people come in and do some professional development activities. We had Dr. Uh, Sarah Nunez come in and do some self-care and how to just at work take care of yourself during oh, your yeah. eight-hour work day um, in a place to just feel safe and feel included, um, share ideas, bring things to the table, um, and make suggestions. And so um, we're really excited about those two groups. Uh, now, 
um, since me being in this role, I now sit on the policy steering and management um, committee and we have a policy subgroup. So every policy that's getting revised or renewed, it has an equity lens. So there's a group of us um, from the ENI work group that look at those policies from equity lens and look at language, look at processes. For example, um, the hostile work environment um, mm -hmm. policy we recently reviewed. And one of the words in there was like, I think um, it was very vague. It was like to feel like this is hostile. I was like, well, we got to define hostile because hostile can mean different things for different people from different backgrounds. So where do we put that definition and maybe even provide an example? So when people read that, because what we don't want happening is someone to can take, take a perception of maybe someone rolling their eyes or someone deep breathing be like, oh, that makes me feel mm -hmm. unsafe, that's hostile. And then people are getting unnecessary reports filed on them. Yeah. And so that's happened. We know that's been a barrier before. So how do we make sure to be clear of when we say hostile, it means the following yeah. so that those instances don't happen. Um, we have had some lunch and learns with uh, community members, mm -hmm. with um, BIPOC nonprofits, BIPOC uh, mental health workers. And we also met with students from SILSA. Um, and so again, re building it in from the ground up, um, we're also incorporating our equity impact analysis tool through our budget process. So this is phase three, this mm -hmm. is year three. The first year was a separate process. We got the data, we got feedback. We were like, hmm, we need to tweak this a little bit. We need to make some changes. We made those changes, did it again last year. It was all online, all electronic, which I think helped. Yes. Got some more feedback, was like, mm, we need to tweak this again. And so this year, going into the budget cycle, we have fully incorporated it into the budget cycle process. So when when departments are going in, working on their position requests, their capital requests, their vehicle requests, there are embedded equity questions that are, are a part of that whole process. So they're not having to do two different documents, two different forms, it's all in one form. And we're excited about that. And as we're getting ready to launch the budget cycle, we will be there day one from the equity office talking about what the questions are addressing, why they're there, mm -hmm. how they're being scored, and how they'll play a role in the ultimate decision of you know what maybe gets approved or not approved. Yeah. So those are some of those deeper ones. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I know I have referenced it earlier. We talked a little bit about the equity and inclusion work group. Mm -hmm. I've been with the county for the past 10 years. And so you had mentioned some of that ground up working from the ground up and I've been, been myself being a part of the inaugural um, equity and inclusion work group but share with our listeners what is actually is the equity and inclusion work group and what are some of the work that they're doing? Sure so the equity and inclusion work group right now um, that's one of the things that I did in my position which I'm kind of excited about mm -hmm. um, was revamp the structure and so we have initially it was volunteers it was who wants to be a mm -hmm. part of this groundbreaking work who wants to help us build inequity into the foundation of our county. Yeah. And people signed up, people were like, yes, me, raise my hand. And so um, because we are working to weave and strengthen the muscle, equity muscle within the county, we're like we need a representative from every department. Oh, yeah. So we opened it up to every department to send um, at least one representative to serve a two year term. We meet once a month. And in those meetings, we discuss various things from programming that's coming up, events, policies, practices, um, and we also try to provide education to the members that they can take it back to their departments and yeah. share with their business plan managers, supervisors, department heads, so that the information is trickling both up and down. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but it's also a place where we hear proposals. People bring in ideas and suggestions, and we're like the first step of, hmm, where do we think this does this have teeth? Should this move forward? Where yeah. should we go with this? And then from the equity and inclusion work group, if they decide to push something forward, it comes to my office. I review it. Yes, this is great. Let's move it forward. It then goes to our management advisory group, MAG, and then they give feedback, ask questions, and if it goes forward from there, then it's something that might be implemented countywide. Mm -hmm. So it serves as a place to learn and grow and to take back to the department, but also the NI work group helps push policy and change mm -hmm. forward as being that first step of conversation, debate, discussion back and forth. Yeah. And just again, just um, just reiterating, as I mentioned, I was part of that inaugural group. So one of the things I remember is working on the racial equity action plan, and mm -hmm. part of that, and um, and also just um, just my own evolution in it, the meet team. You mm -hmm. know, where we doing some racial equity trainings as well as other things. Are there um, 
Are there other subgroups of this group? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I'm so glad you brought up the meat team because they're amazing. And so I'll take a little second to kind of woo pump them up. <laughs> so our meat team is our Meaningfully Engaged Equity Together team. And they were tasked with developing um, our in-house trainings. They're also tasked with just trainings in general. And so we're looking at maybe starting to contract out, um, use other agencies that already have trainings built because these people have other main jobs within the county that they do. And so this is extra work and extra time. So I do want to stress that it's so awesome that people are saying, yes, sign me up. I want to do and take on these extra responsibilities within my role within the county. Um, and so they created the racial equity training, which received the National Association of Counties um, Achievement Award for 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to think about the year <laughs> that we're in now. Um, and so that was amazing and awesome to be rewarded for that hard work. Um, to date, I think we have, um, I know we have more than a thousand Buncombe County employees who have attended all four modules of that racial equity training. Um, and they're currently revamping it to move it online and break it into smaller chunks so that we can, again, removing those barriers. We have Buncombe County staff members who don't work at a computer all day. They're yeah. out in the community. They're doing different things. They're on tractors, they're on trailers, they're solid waste. Yeah. And it's like, we need to make this better for them to be able to watch on their own time, maybe from their home computer. So we're working on that. Um, and then we also have our LGBTQIA plus training. Um, and we have uh, recently been reached out to by departments, which warms my heart. And they're like, hey, we want you know, the meet team to come and like train our staff. And we were like, okay, great. That's why we're here. Yes, let's do it. And so the goal is to get, I think, 100 of their staff trained um, before the end of this year on the LGBTQ training. So we're really excited about that. Um, some of our other subgroups is a policy subgroup that I chair. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we review policies and give feedback. There is the Racial Equity Action Plan Community Engagement uh, subgroup that is working to get information out about the REAP and what we're doing and how that's going. There's the Accessibility subgroup that's looking at internally how our practices and agencies and buildings can be better accessible for people with visible yes. and um, um, visible and invisible, I like to say differing abilities instead of disabilities. Um, and we have our, um, I was going to say arts and letters, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> we have our public arts uh, subgroup that is looking at, again, how to kind of maybe beautify the county mm -hmm. with artists, local artists from BIPOC and other marginalized groups. And we have one more. Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, membership. Um, and so that just looks at the criteria that we provide for memberships, making sure that our new members are oriented to the work we do, giving them the governance manual. Mm -hmm. Recently, they just put out a survey to say, hey, is this working? Is the time that we meet working? Is the mm -hmm. day that we meet um, is the frequency working? What changes do we need to make? And so we're getting ready to look at that result and make changes if necessary. Yeah. So really kind of constantly checking in and looking at what we're doing and how we can make sure to do it to the best of our ability. Yeah. And, and you know, great work, great work going on and everything. But I, I have a question Then we get back on this, this, this path right here. That's a lot of heavy emotional work. Mm -hmm. How are you all taking care of yourselves? Well, funny you should ask that <laughs> because I feel like my whole department recently has dealt with bouts of sickness. Yeah. Um, but I have a really great group of people that I work with. Mm -hmm. I like get up every day and it's like, oh, let me go work with my people. Prime example, um, today in Wayne is not feeling well. Mm -hmm. And she had a 10 o'clock meeting and she reached out to me and I didn't see it because I was doing a billion other things. And so she sent a team to the group and was like, hey, y'all, I'm sick, but there's this meeting. Can somebody take up? welcome people and do an icebreaker and they were like yeah immediately what do you want da, 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 da. and so i love the fact that there's that camaraderie because i think that helps with the work if you came yeah. to work and work with a team that y'all don't see eye to eye you're bumping heads with the work already being hard it makes yeah. it so much harder but because we truly value each other we truly care for one another as people as human beings we can go sit in each other's office and go, oh, today was hard. Yeah. Or I'm tired today. Or let's, what's going on? And if it's me tomorrow, then I can know that I can go to Nafisa or go to Hector and be like, oh, today was hard. So I think that's a big part of how we take care of each other, that we, we do take care of each other. We listen to each other. We offer support. Um, I also try to remind them to rest, mm -hmm. um, try to remind them to set boundaries, myself included. Um, and also I think a big part of it is one of the things that I'm trying to make sure to do is structure our office and the work that we do in a way that is helpful and assistive, but not 
um, only equity office. Like, mm-hmm. I want to know that if I'm not in the room or Hector's not in the room, equity is still going to get talked about. Mm-hmm. It's still going to get discussed. So we're really trying to put out information and resources and support and guides and tools um, to help Buncombe County staff and employees learn the language, learn the value of equity, learn the value of inclusive practices, learn the value of psychological safety, so that it starts to become a norm for them. Mm -hmm. So that if my whole team is out sick and there's a meeting going on, I can feel like somebody's gonna bring up, hey, do we consider this? Or hey, do we think about that? For me, when we get to that point consistently across the board, I would feel like that is a major success yeah. of the office mm-hmm. that we were able to do that. And so we're, we're getting there. Yeah, and it's one of those things, just as I mentioned, I've been a part of this, like adjacent to the work. I'm not exactly in your office, but it's rewarding work. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things that you can show up and have your skills and um, your skills and talents. Like I worked in finance. I was sitting there in finance, but when this opportunity around the equity showed up, it really invigorated something that I personally had a passion about. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things of being a native of this area has really allowed me to A, do with the progress of people in my community, but also just spoke to the passion and what skills and talents that I had that I could bring. And so being a part of the meet team and the racial equity trainings it really galvanate and gave make you feel like a different purpose and that mm-hmm. you will really make a change. So while at the same time it is heavy work that we're doing, but progress you get progress through some of that heavy lifting. Yeah. And so I think the equity work and the county being aware of that have really kind of invigorated. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things that you mentioned is the oper- operationalizing equity within the mm-hmm. um, organization. So it's not just like a fly-by word that we're just saying, oh, we're about equity. Really hearing all the work mm-hmm. and the growth of your department really shows how the county has centered it and have really tried to disrupt the system with it. Yeah. And so even as the pressures come on this department, it's one of those things where you can really feel like it's going to take a lot to root it out. Mm-hmm. And so we done did some of that um, tilling the soil and it's, it's bearing fruit and it's very kind of exciting to be with the county at this time as we move through even during with this political challenge so i just wanted to get my personal kind of response to that but it's heavy work but it's worthwhile work and so it really drives the it conversation. is it is and i'm glad you mentioned like that tolling of the soul piece because i think where we are um in the process you mentioned the racial equity action plan um, and we weren't able, unfortunately, to have the summit um, July 20th due to the thunderstorms and the rain. One of people to be safe. But the goal for that summit was a to introduce the community to the racial um, the racial equity plan to the team, the equity human rights office team, to talk about the racial equity action plan, what successes we've had so far, and how we're moving forward. And I think like that tolling of the soul that you talk about, some of the successes that we've had, we're looking at like tax assessor, where you know after conversations and and real conversations like not bow bow (laughs) beating conversations not shame on you but just like hey tell us about the work you do and then let us listen and kind of think about maybe where some of those blind spots some of those areas and those conversations were great and they they were already thinking in that direction and we kind of helped push a little way and so now um the tax service office going out into BIPOC communities and black communities and having these I think it was coffee coffee with Keith these Mm -hmm. chats and so so many more people are now aware of like oh this is what the tax process is and this is what appraising is versus when I have to pay my taxes oh, yeah. and this is what I can do if I feel like my assessment was too high I can appeal like what do you mean mm-hmm. and so just I think for me a big part of and I tell this to everybody that I work with <laughs> a big part of equity and inclusion is education yeah people can't do better if they don't know better and so if I didn't even know that I could appeal something about the tax on my house and I just think oh this is what they say I gotta pay and I gotta pay it and it's frustrating and yes it is and here's another option here's another thing so the more that we can educate others and share out information and so really excited about the work that has come through the reap and knowing that yes it was to fiscal year 25 which we're in but it's not going away we're incorporating it into our strategic plan 2030 Mm -hmm. um we're incorporating equity goals into department business plans so every department has been asked to include at minimum, at least one um, equity plan, equity goal into their plans. And so, you know, it's it's a great thing to see. Like, again, from the birth, like you said, you were there from the beginning mm-hmm. when it was just 31 people in a room coming up with <laughs> ideas to now it really literally being 
um, built into the fabric of what we do with mm-hmm. our next strategic plan and in our business plan. So it's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I hate to break this up, but because I'm telling you right now, this is one of Leonard's passions. <laughs> Um, but we have to wrap up and so I would love for each of you um, to give something that you want um, our audience to remember and keep with them you can go ahead Dr. No oh you would start with me first I'm going to start with Leonard yeah start with Leonard come back Jones (laughs) well I would just like to remind um, the listeners out there that the work that the Equity and Human Rights Office is under attack is one that we're in those political violent, um, environments right now, and this is an election year. So the work that we're doing, go to www.buncombecounty.org and look at the work that the Equity Human Rights is doing. And you can look at the Racial Equity Action Plan, you can look at the Racial Equity Murals that's around our city to show that we are a diverse group of people in this um, county, and we want everybody to have a place. We have a language action plan that's coming out there. So we're thinking of our um, non-English speaking residents here. So equity has been every, you know, since 2019, 2019, we've been trying to weave it in and we are weaving it into the operations of Buncombe County government and serving the people in the community. Mm -hmm. And so again, this is an election year. We are about 76 days from an election. So go to election services, um, find out if you register, have your ID. If you need an ID, they can get it. So when you, if you believe in equity and human rights, we need you to stand up and support this and go out and vote. And everyone uh, who has the right to vote or the credentials to vote, please do that. That is one of the um, one of the rights that you do have in this country. And so I just want to remind that we are 76 days away from an election and take a friend Tell somebody, invite a new voter, or get someone who just haven't been participating in the process. This is a very exciting year, and we can continue the work that is happening in our Equity and Human Rights Office. That was amazing. That was awesome. And ditto, ditto, ditto to everything Leonard said. And I was watching the DNC last night, and um, former First Lady Michelle Obama was like, do something. And so I think that's my takeaway Mm -hmm. is... Um, the soul has been told. It's been told for generations. Yeah. From my ancestors, the work has been done. People died for our right to vote. People died for our right to stand up and um, advocate for ourselves. And so what I would want to leave listeners with is I am asking you all to consistently do something. Uh, when you hear about events that are being hosted by the county, show up. Mm-hmm. When you hear about events that are being hosted by nonprofit um, BIPOC organizations, show up, support. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to see your faces in the crowd. We want to hear your voices. And we want to hear a large um, offering of your voices and diversity of your voices. So please don't think that it doesn't matter or your voice doesn't count or we're not going to do anything with it. Give us time to do mm-hmm. with it. Things. The one thing that I have learned since moving into the government realm is that we have a lot of great ideas. We have a lot of things we want to do. And also we have to realize that things take time. They have to go through voting processes mm-hmm. and be vetted and be discussed and be um, looked at because it is for the whole Buncombe County. Mm-hmm. But if you don't ever let us know where those blind spots are, where those areas for support are needed, we don't know to add that to the list of things that we're working on. Mm-hmm. So do something by showing up to events, going to the equity webpage, seeing what's happening, going to county, buncombecounty.org, and just seeing the different events. I guarantee you things are coming. Um, there is a change. It's coming. It's not going to come. It's here. Um, so just please continue to support mm-hmm. and, and and share your voice so that we can know how best to help. And equity is also our rural residents out there. So if you're in the rural parts of the county, equity is for you too. So we want to hear your voice as well. Mm-hmm. All right. So I, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap this up. Um, when we hear the word equity, we love to connect it with race. But equity is not for one person, it's not for two people, it is for the whole community. And when we say whole community, Leonard made a a point to say, this is also for the rural community. This is for those who are without internet services. This is for those who are without funding to get their children into uh, school, get the things that they need. This is for people who want to live comfortably in their homes in Buncombe County, but the more, the rent is so expensive. This is for all of us. Equity means putting us all in position to thrive. We have been surviving so long and we have labored 
and labored. Our ancestors have labored and labored. And here we are at the point where we're getting ready to give birth to something new. And it is time for us to pick up those things and get ready for what is coming, what we have worked for. So just like Lena and um, Dr. No stated, if you hear something going on in the computer or in the community, show up. It does not matter what your skin looks like. Show up, be heard, get the information, be informed. You know, one thing, you know, I would say, um, we can listen to hearsay and they say, but until you research it, research it for yourself, you don't know what anyone has said. So my thing is, get educated, Get the knowledge, get informed, and get busy, and do what you need to do. And you know what that means. You've been tapped in. Go vote. Thank you for listening to Tapped In, Buncombe County's half hour to empower, here on WRES 100.7 FM in Nashville. Learn more about today's topics at buncombecounty.org. Otherwise, stay tuned for more great episodes coming up. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.